anointed for what's next. Anointed for what's next. I believe this is something that uh, God has given me uh, for the season to come and the season that we're in. Uh, but if you can hashtag it, anointed for what's next. Drop it on social media. Drop it on your timeline. Check in to the Forward Christian Center. Let people know that you're here in the building. Also, before I move forward, this Saturday we will have our men's prayer breakfast. Yeah. Amen. I look forward to rubbing shoulders with the men. I look forward to uh, praying, praising, crying uh, with some men. Um, I thank God for our men because truth be told, uh, it's not easy being a man, let alone a man of God. So I thank God for our men that's going to come out and give praise, honor, and glory to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And we're going to break bread. We're going to fellowship together. Uh, we live in a day and a time and season where a lot of times men, they try to do life by themselves. But I believe uh, we're better together. Iron sharpens iron, and that's what we're going to do this coming Saturday morning. Also, um, this coming Sunday, we have our family worship day. It's going to be a time where we're going to come together. Uh, we want to see the families in the building. We want to see the families matching. Uh, we're going to worship together collectively as a family. Uh, one of the things Holy Spirit laid upon my heart was that we're in a time and season where um, the enemy is coming in to try to uh, steal who the Lord is from the families that are out there. And because of that, we're going to have our family worship service. I believe where the word says, as far as me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. We want to make sure that we have families in the building. We want to make sure that uh, the sons and daughters can see their fathers and their mothers praising God, serving God. And we're going to do that together uh, this coming Sunday. Also, uh, this coming Friday, um, we're going to be traveling to Warner Robins, Georgia. Uh, one of our, two of our dearest members, uh, Julia Miller and Amber Miller, they both lost their, excuse me, uh, Julia lost her, her father and mother. Amber lost her grandfather and grandmother uh, at the same time, pretty much. Uh, you all know, y'all heard the stories normally when the, um, husbands and wives have been married for quite some time. When one goes, typically the other one goes. And uh, we received a report where I guess the, fa uh, the father heard that the mother was, wasn't doing well and she was about to go on to be with the Lord. And he uh, had a heart attack because he said, I don't want to live without her. So he went on to be with the Lord. And a day later, she went on to be with the Lord. And although it's bitter, I believe it's also sweet at the same time. Because it shows how much, you know, we can be connected as husbands and wives. I don't want to do life without my wife. Uh, if we're going to go, I want to go together. You know, that, that, that's just me. I ain't got time to train no other woman. <laughs> I ain't got time to break nobody else in. No, no. Uh, we we got to go on to be with Jesus by the same time. And I don't want to go on and I don't want her to be here because I don't want her to have to break no other man. <laughs> oh, hey, man, have me feeling some type of way. All I'm going to say is I'm coming back for you. <laughs> All right, Lord, have mercy. But, yeah, we're going to travel uh, this Friday. We're going to go and um, show some love to both Julia Miller and Amber Miller. Uh, there in Warner Roberts, Georgia. So for uh, our pastors, ministerial staff, and the, any other partners that want to travel down uh, with us, you can feel free to do that as well. All right, well, it is that time for the word. I'm not going to keep you all. I know this is uh, student of the word night. Uh, let's jaywalk to the book of 1 Samuel chapter 16 and verse 11. 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 11. 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 11, that's where the text will be coming from. 
and it reads as this. And Samuel said to Jesse, are all the young men here? Then he said, there remains yet the youngest, and there he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, send and bring him, for we will not sit down till he comes here. So he sent and brought him in. Now he was a ruddy with bright eyes and good looking. And the Lord said, arise, anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel arose and went to Ramah. I'm going to tag verse 13. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. And I'm going to speak to you from the topic, anointed for what's next. Let us pray. Father God, we love you. We thank you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your power, your spirit that's here in this place. Father God, I pray, Lord, that you'll allow your word to fall on good ground. I pray, Lord, that it would edify and bring to pass that which it was sent to do. Father God, I pray that you'll think through my mind, speak through my mouth, none of me and all of you. And I pray these things in Jesus' name. And the church said, and amen, anointed for what's next. Here in this passage, the prophet Samuel was instructed to anoint the next king of Israel. Being that Saul had been rejected by God, the Bible says that God gave King Saul clear instructions to kill all of the Amalekites. The scripture says that King Saul, instead of killing all of the Amalekites, he kept some of the spoils from the war for himself. The prophet Samuel came up to Saul saying, asking Saul in so many words, you know, what's going on? And Saul literally had a sheep bleeding behind him. And that day, because Saul was disobedient to the instructions of God, he forfeited his right to walk under the anointing that God had on his life. We can see it in verse in first Samuel chapter 16 and verse seven. It says this. But the Lord said to Samuel, look not on his countenance or on his height or stature. Because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh at the outward appearance. But God looks at the heart. This is a key scripture because this is a scripture that kind of gets people in trouble. Because I've grown up and I've heard many statements made where this boy is going to be a preacher because he has a preacher's head. This boy is going to be a preacher because he has a heart for God and he has a, 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 a countenance that look like he's going to be a man of God. But truth be told, God looks a little bit further than the way man looks. Man looks at the outward appearance, but it is God that looks at the heart of man. When you start to look at man, truth be told, man likes to judge a book by his cover. But God does the total opposite. He doesn't care about your cover. He cares about your content. It's the content of your heart. And literally, Saul was that type of person. He had the head of a king. He had the look of a king. But he was missing one key ingredient. That was the heart of a king. So li literally, that leads me to this first thought, and I want you to get this. In this season, God is saying, we can't be man's man. We got to be God's man. 
Yeah, yeah. In this season, you can't be man's man. You got to be God's man. In this season, you can't be man's woman. You got to be God's woman. God is looking for somebody that's going to be totally sold out to him in this season. God is looking for somebody that's going to be connected with him like they have never been connected before. Can I suggest even during this season, you're going to have to walk some things all by yourself. You may have been with some people in the past. You may have been friends with certain people in the past. You may have been comfortable with certain relationships. But this is a time and season where God is going to make you uncomfortable with being comfortable so that he can set you up for the anointing for what's next. Yes, God has a great plan for all of us. And I just want to begin to stir your spirit to let you know God is about to do something new in your life. But you got to have great expectation for what's next to come because you're anointed for what's next. Amen. So literally in this season, in this time, we got to be man's. We can't be man's man, but we got to be God's man. Acts 13 and 22 says this. And when he had removed him, he raised up unto them David to be their king to whom also he gave their testimony and said I have found David the son of Jesse a man after mine own heart which shall fulfill some of my will a little bit of my will all of my will this is going to be the qualifier for this season and this season to come God is looking for somebody that's not going to do just some of his will, but he's looking for somebody that's going to do all of his will. I'm talking about all of his will when your husband or your wife don't want to do all of his will. I'm talking about doing all of his will when your circumstances and situation says you better not do the will of God. I'm talking about doing all of the will of God when your kids might be acting amok. But yet God says, in spite of what they're doing, I want you to do all of what I've called you to do. Because I'm looking for a man or a woman after mine own heart. So this is good. God is looking for a man or a woman after his own heart. I remember when God began to reveal to me that he had a call on my life. During that time and season, there was a time where I had to separate myself, or I'll say it like this, consecrate myself for what God was about to do next. Remember A few weeks ago, I preached that during the time of consecration because Joshua knew that God was about to do something amazing in his future. Joshua made up in his mind that he was going to consecrate himself that day. And God is saying the same thing to us today for the anointing that he has for our next We got to be willing to consecrate ourselves so that we can do all that God is telling us to do. For some of us, it might be shutting down a business. For some of us, it might be foregoing, going after contracts. For some of us, it might be dumbing down some of the hours that your job is trying to get you to do. Because truth be told, the enemy can sometimes try to Bless us in such a way to where he takes us out of the will of God for our life. That's why the scripture says, what profit a man to gain the whole world but lose his soul? And one of the biggest tactics or tricks of the enemy is to keep you distracted by the things that you want so that you won't fulfill the things that God wants for your life. But God is not looking for you to do some of his will. He's looking for you to do All of his will. Woo, this is good. Nobody don't want to clap there, but you may have to give up those hours. You may have to sacrifice some more of your time. 
but in but the benefit is going to be the future that God has for you. And I want you to see this. David would not have been able to step into kingship had he not done all of the will of God for his life. And God is saying, if you want to be set up for what's next, you got to be willing to do everything that I've called you to do. So David was a man after God's own heart. And he was able to fulfill not just some of God's will, but all of his will. And the Bible says that Samuel, he was looking for the next king. He was distraught. He was upset because he likes King Saul. But God had disqualified who Saul was. And the Lord told Samuel, get up, go over to Jesse's house. Saul began to take up his horn of oil. He went to Jesse's house looking for the next king. He looks at Jesse and he has Jesse calling all his sons. Shema came in, Abinadab came in and some of the other brothers. When the brothers came in and, and, and Samuel saw, Samuel pulled out the horn of oil and he was ready to anoint them. He said, surely this is the one. Got rid of the pour of oil, oil would not flow. He kept going from one brother to the next brother to the next brother. Till finally he got to Eliab, and Eliab was, was David's brother that had the look of a king. And he got ready to pour the oil, but the oil still didn't flow. Samuel looks at Jesse and says, Jesse, are, is this all of your boys? Jesse says, oh, I have another son. He's out there in the field, tended to some sheep. Samuel calls him in. David comes in. He puts, up, put, puts the oil above his head and the oil began to flow. Seven sons, oil didn't flow. The eighth son came and the oil did flow. And when I began to look at the numbers, I began to realize seven is the number of completion. But it is eight that symbolizes new beginnings. And God is saying in this season and in this, in this time, this is a new beginning for your life. And the oil, it would not flow on the other friends and your other family members that were around you because they weren't the one. But the oil is going to flow on your life because he's about to anoint you for what's next in your life. Because you've been faithful to tend to the sheep. So get this. Here's my thought. The oil will always find the right vessel. Yeah, it's going to always find the right vessel. Samuel tried to pour it on the other brothers, but it wouldn't flow. Why? Because the oil always finds the right person. And sometimes, and I'm going to speak to someone, you may be feeling like you've been overlooked. Some of you all may feel like people have passed you by. But God says, this is your time. This is your season. This is your moment. This is your new beginning. You done been all the way around the block. You done did this, that, and the other. And people seem like they done passed you by. But God says, I got an eye on you, and I got an eye on your situation. And I'm about to anoint you for what's next. You may say, well, Pastor Charles, why do I have to be anointed for what's next? You have to be anointed for what's next because God is taking you somewhere you've never been before. And because he's taking you to a place you've never been before, you're going to have to carry an anointing that you never had before. Mind you, the scripture says, from this day forward, David was anointed. So it will be in your life. From this day forward, God is anointing you for what's next. New seasons, new marriages, new opportunities, new open doors. 
new promotions, new raises, new increases in this year of demonstration because he's anointing you for what's next. But in order for him to anoint you for what's next, you got to be willing to sacrifice in your now. Woo, this is good. In your now, in your now, in your now season. David, he was out there tending to the sheep. And I believe it was symbolic of the sheep that he was going to carry in his kingdom. Bible says first the natural, then the spiritual. A lot of times people want spiritual increase and spiritual promotion, but you haven't been faithful in the natural. David was faithful tending the sheep. He was faithful cleaning the boo-boo of the sheep. He was faithful tending to the problems of the sheep. Why? Because when he got his kingdom, he was going to have those same problems with the people. And God says, because you've been faithful with what, who I have called you to and the people that I have called you to, I'm about to anoint you for what's next Because of your faithfulness. So God is saying literally, don't get weary in well-doing. For in due season, you're going to reap if you don't faint. So the oil, it will always find the right vessel. 1 Samuel 16 and 11 says this. And Samuel said to Jesse, all the young men here. Then he said, there remains yet the youngest and there he is keeping the sheep and Samuel said to Jesse send and bring him for we will not sit down till he comes here this is good because this lets me let me know hold on hold. this lets me know that in this season you won't be missed God is waiting on you This is your time. And this season in your life will not move on without you. And sometimes you've been having that feeling. You're like, God, I've been serving you for a long time. When is my time? God, I've been been faithful. When is my time? God says, this is your time. I'm not going to sit down until I bless you. Woo, this is good. I'm not going to sit down until I bless you. So he said, send and bring him, for we will not sit down till he comes. So he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy. Get this. Bright eyes and good looking. And the Lord said, arise, anoint him, for this is the one. Yeah. During this season, you're the one that God is looking for. You're the one that God has on his radar and although you might not think that you're qualified it's not your qualifications that's going to allow the anointing to flow on your life it's your heart because God has judged you by the content of your heart Woo, this is good and while man is looking at the outward appearance Man might be sizing you up, saying you need to be this and you need to be that. God is saying, yeah, you are everything that I call you to be. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. You're my handiwork and you're the apple of my eye. Because God doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies those that are called. So the Lord said, arise, anoint him. For this is the one. So what is this whole anointing or this oil for? The word oil or the word anoint is where we get this, the Greek words smearing from. When we say David was anointed, it simply means that he was smeared with something. It means he was painted. It means he was also consecrated anybody went through consecration for 21 days yeah yeah you've been anointed you've been smeared you've been painted you've been consecrated in other words you've been set apart for the work of the lord 
You've been set apart for his service. In other words, if you want to do a greater level of service, God has anointed you. He's consecrated you for such a time as this. And it's not going to be your diploma that's going to get you where God is taking you next. It's going to be the spirit of, of the living God resting on your life, enabling you to do supernatural things. And you're going to get some things you ain't qualified for because it won't be by power. It won't be by might. It will be by the spirit of the living God. Because you've been anointed for what's next. So anointing means I've been smeared, I've been painted, I've been consecrated. So what is this anointing about? What is it? It is a spiritual endowment, a divine, I'll say it like this, a divine enablement that allows God to put his super on your natural. Yeah, he'll put his super on your natural. You might have a high school diploma. But when God put his super on your natural, you'll have the wherewithal of a person with a Ph.D. Some of y'all, y'all might be um, downtrodden and you might be mundane, but God says, no, 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 no. I'm going to raise you up and put my super on your on your natural and you're going to do things that you don't even think that you're able to do. You're going to be able to teach on a greater level, sing on a greater level, praise on a greater level, pray on a greater level, worship on a greater level greater level and be faithful in the things of God on a greater level times past you might have had a setback and you might have self sabotaged your own self but God says not so in this season these putting a grace and an anointing on your life hallelujah to get past every roadblock and hurdle that once held you back So God's anointing is a spiritual endowment and divine enablement where he will put his super on your natural and you'll do supernatural things. Yeah, we got some super men in here. We got some super women in here. And y'all going to do some supernatural things financially in your family life. Because God is with you and you have an anointing for what's next. So why do we need the anointing? Number one, the anointing, will, it, was, it is there to do three things. It's, though, it's for the, those that do. The anointing or the oil is for those that do. So in other words, if you have a heart to do something for God's glory, there's an anointing for it. You might not know how to do everything, but the anointing will lead you and guide you and teach you all things. You might not know how to cross all your T's and dot all your I's, but when you walk in God's anointing, he'll begin to walk with you and he'll elevate you and he'll take you to some places and you'll start to do some things that you never thought you'll be able to do because it'll be because of his anointing. You'll be able to minister to others. You'll have a holy boldness like never before. God is going to give you wisdom like never before. You're going to have creative dreams and you're going to see things that you have never been able to see anymore. Because of the anointing, he'll show you things. Hallelujah. Let me give you this. God's anointing is so good because he, he'll open your eyes to have you see things other people can't see. I remember when we were looking for land for this church. We couldn't quite find what we were looking for. We found some land over there off of uh, Dunn Avenue and Bridges. It was five acres, and we were about to try to purchase it, put it under contract before we can close. The man died. I said, what kind of junk is this? I said, this is crazy. We had it for a good price. It was the price that we needed. Before the land skyrocketed, because right now, if you're looking for land, you're going to spend out the yin-yang. Because everything is crazy high. And we were right looking for land. 
And my wife and I, we were riding on Biscayne Boulevard. Had them rolled up Biscayne thousands of times. Never saw the land. It's amazing how things can be in broad daylight and you just can't see it. Roll by there, a sign up on the yard, in the yard. My wife and I, we end up calling the sign. Yeah, it was we buy houses. We called them asking, are they, will they sell us the land? They was like, well, we normally don't sell land. For anybody that know JW Builders, they own all kind of land and they build all kind of houses. And the reason why they get the land is so they can build brand new houses on it. Well, we said we want to buy it and they uh, said, okay, present the offer and we'll take that offer to our, our CEO. I don't, the man said, I don't think that he's going to sell land because we normally, you know, uh, use that land to uh, build houses. Lo and behold, that man came back and said, we're going to sell y'all the land. <laughs> the land that we now own free and clear. But I want y'all to see this. I don't know how many countless times we rode up Biscayne Boulevard. We rode past that, line, that land several times. I had them been to Deacon Tarbell House several times, never saw the land. But when God anoints you for what's next, he'll reveal to you things that you've never seen before. Woo! I'm coming down your block. In other words, I'm saying God is going to open your eyes to see greater opportunities. You're going to see greater things that you've never seen. And it was in plain sight. But the difference is going to be God's super on your natural and it's going to allow you to see supernatural things. And give you supernatural wisdom that you've never had before. So the anointing is for those that do and I'll get ready to close. It is for those that's doing something. In other words, David was already out there with the sheep. He wasn't saying, Lord, anoint me and I'll go be with the sheep. No, he was already out there with the sheep. And God says, because I see you already out there with the sheep, I'm going to anoint you for what's next. I'm going to confirm some things. I'm going to validate some things. I'm going to manifest some things in your life because of your faithfulness to my work. So the anointing is for those that are doing. So David, he was already doing what he needed to do for the sheep. And God has an anointing for those that will do his will in this season of next. First Samuel 16 and 11, and I'll close with this. And Samuel said to Jesse, are here all thy children? And he said, there remaineth yet the youngest, and behold, he's keeping the sheep. Woo! Want to encourage you. For those that's out there, still tending to God's sheep. Keep on keeping the sheep. For those that's teaching God's children, those that's pouring into God's next generation, keep on tending to the sheep. For those that's serving in God's kingdom, for those that's sacrificing and doing what they need to do so that God can be glorified, God says, keep on doing what you're doing. Because your labor is not in vain. And sometimes you're wondering, well, God, is God really looking at me? Is God, does God really have an eye on my situation? He's saying he has an eye on your situation. Keep on tending to those sheep. Because those sheep that you're taking care of will one day turn into a kingdom that you'll have authority over. So keep on doing what's right. Keep standing. Keep being faithful. After you've done all to stand, stand there for. Because God sees you. God knows. God cares. 
So the anointing is for those that do. Also, the anointing is there to break containment. Sometimes in our lives, we feel like we've capped out or we're maxed out or God doesn't have the room to do something next for us. God says, yes, I am. There's an anointing to break the containment off of your life. Some of us, we've gotten stale and stagnant, but God says, "Uh uh-uh, my anointing is going to break that up off of you. Some of us, we've got settled and and we we act like we know everything. God said, no, no, I got anointing that's going to break that up off you. And the places that you might be bound, I got an anointing for it. Isaiah 10 and 27 says this, it shall come to pass in that day that his burden will be taken away from his shoulders and his yoke from your neck. And the yoke will be destroyed because of the what? The anointing, the anointing oil. So in other words, whatever may be trying to hold you back in this season of next, God's anointing is going to destroy the yoke. Whatever is trying to hold you back or hold you hostage to the things of the past, God's anointing is destroying the yoke. Whatever says that you can't do this and you can't do that, God's anointing is breaking the containment to let you know, hey, I've anointed you for what's next. And I've come to destroy the yoke. I came to remove the burden. I came to shift the load. And my anointing is going to do for you what you can't do for yourself. In this next season, it's going to be greater. In this next season, God is going to do some bigger and better things for your life. In this next season, God is going to open up your eyes and you're going to see things like you've never seen before. You're going to feel things like you never felt before. You're going to accomplish things that you've never accomplished before. Not by power, not by might, by my spirit, says the Lord. This year of hallelujah, this year of demonstration, God is going to allow those things that were hard in times past to become easy. This is going to be that season of confirmation, validation, and manifestation. You're going to see things. You're going to experience things like never before. And when you take one step, God is going to uphold you with his righteous right hand. Hallelujah. So keep your heart open for what's next. So number one, the anointing is for those that do. Number two. The anointing is there to break containment. And number three, the anointing will always cause you to win. Yeah. All I do is win, win, win. No matter what. And one of the things I've come to understand over the years Because God's anointing is on my life, I can make the wrong move. And the wrong move will turn into the right move because of God's anointing. Woo, I want you to get this. In other words, I'm saying with God's anointing, mistakes will turn into blessings. With God's anointing, things that look like it's messed up will turn into ministry in your life. And this is the confidence that I have in him. That if I ask any good thing from him, he'll give it to me. And you got to have that same confidence that no matter what you face in life, you're going to come out on top. David said it like this, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. When God anointed David with the anointing oil, he was anointed to win in his life. David had many enemies, and I want you to see this. 
As a matter of fact, David, he had a, Goli he had a Goliath. He had a giant in his life. And nobody else could defeat this giant. But David was different than everybody else because he had the anointing of God on his life. And the anointing of God allowed him to triumph over the giant that was in his life. What am I saying? The same anointing that was on David's life is the same anointing on your life. And God is anointing you for what's next for your gi giants and your Goliaths to come. So no matter what you may face in life, you're going to come out on top. You get your rock. You get your slingshot. Because that giant is going to fall. Because God is going to put his super on your natural. He's going to guide that stone. You all got to see it. David defeated that Goliath. He defeated Goliath with a rock and a slingshot. Come on, come on. As a kid, I used to have a slingshot. Breaking people windows. But David broke that joke ahead. How did the rock get there? Because of David's anointing. He was out there with the sheep, taking care of the sheep. And God had anointed him then. Because he knew that while he was facing the lions and the tigers and the bears, oh my, that one day he was going to have to face his giants. And the same anointing that was there with David in the sheep, with the sheep, it's the same anointing that was there when David defeated his Goliath. What am I saying? God sees you in the pastures. And he's going to be with you all the way to your palace. This is your time. This is your season. And God has an anointing on your life for what's next. And there is anointing for what's next. When is it? Right now. Yeah, right now, David, biblically, you'll see where he was anointed one time to defeat Goliath. The second time David was anointed, he was anointed king of Judah. But David was anointed not just two times, but he was anointed a third time, king of Israel. What am I saying? Every stage of David's life, there was an anointing. And likewise, for the seasons of your life now and the seasons to come, God has an anointing for it. So don't you be dismayed. Don't you be discouraged. Don't you be disheartened. Because God has an anointing on your life and it's going to cause you to win. You're going to win. This thing ain't going to triumph over you. No, 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 no. You're going to triumph over it. Because God says there's an anointing on your life for what's next. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you for your power. We thank you for your spirit and your anointing that's here in this place. Father God, I pray that you'll give us a fresh anointing, a fresh wind right now in the name of Jesus. Father God, I pray that you'll pour into us fresh wine like never before in new wineskins. So, Father God, I pray, Lord God, that you'll continue to have your way like never before. And no matter what we face in life, we're going to come out on top because you're going to put a soup on our natural and you're going to cause us to do supernatural things in the name of Jesus. And we give you the praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Come on, let's give God some praise.